Okay, so today I'd like to talk about a little device known as the T cord strip, which I have found on Tinder. Uh, we have a couple here that I have built. Uh, these come in kit form, and what they are is little cord strum devices. You have these 36 keys, uh, one, uh, 12 keys for one of each in the 12 note equal tempered scale, and each of these triggers a chord of some kind. Top row is affixed to major, then your second row to minor, then dominant seventh chord at the bottom, and then you can do key combos as well by Let's so see, you press these two together, the second and third row, and that would give me a, uh, a minor seventh chord. So that's all fixed in the firmware. Up here you have a little capacitive touch sensor, which uh, enables you to sort of quasi-strum through the cords you're holding. And this is all transmitted through USB as MIDI, depending on the version that you, you use of the microcontroller. So this one has a TNC 3.2 that I've put into it. This has a TNC LC. But depending on which one you choose, you also get built-in audio output or you don't. So the version with the LC does not enable this output, uh, but the version with the 3.2, which is another 10 bucks or so. So this little board is about $20, $22. This is um, roughly 12 for the TNC low cost. Uh, Anyway, so another 10 bucks and you get this audio output and you get a couple other neat functions as well. So you only get a couple of synth voices that come out of this. But uh, you also get some auto accompaniment features which we're going to kind of check out here in a second. led me to find these and become interested in these. I've been looking at a device on Tindy for a number of years called the Lestrum, uh, which is kind of the same deal except that it's it's all discrete components. There's no micro, uh, well, there is a microcontroller, but there's no sort of integrated all-in-one solution like the Teensy, which you do have to order separately. So you buy the kit and you get the board uh, that you solder everything to and then the Teensy just is socketed in. So you have to buy the Teensy separately from, from any number of sources. I bought mine from PJRC, the manufacturer, directly. And uh, the kit itself is very affordable. This uh, is always going to be more than the kit, at least at the time of this, this video, um, because I can't believe that Johan Berglund, the, the developer of this kit, uh, is, is selling these so affordably. If I was him, I would probably raise the price a little bit. Um, but all in all, even with the most expensive Teensy this works with, you're looking at around uh, 40 bucks, at least with U.S. shipping cost and all that. And assembly, even though there are over 100 points to solder on the back of the board, this is way easy. Um, takes less time to solder the board than it does to actually just populate it with all the switches and all that stuff. But everything that you need comes in the box from Johan. But I'm digressing a little bit. So uh, what I was going to say is I've been looking for a number of years on Tindy at something called the Lestrum, which is a very similar device, um, but it doesn't have the, the discrete, it, it doesn't have the, the aftermarket microprocessor, everything is just kind of provided for you. And I've been back and forth on the fence about getting one of those. Um, I mostly wanted to get one for a bandmate, um, because I wanted to enable her, she doesn't really play an instrument, but I wanted to enable her to... Uh, to contribute to the harmonic backing as well and um, yeah so I was back and forth on the strum it was significantly more expensive it was a lot more soldering because the components are all uh, built onto the board you don't have the sort of um, simpler construction that Johan's design has and um, one day I was there on the fence again after like two years of should I shouldn't I and I saw this kit, and I was like, you know what? I think today is the day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. There are some neat things about this, um, and I'm, I'm a fairly experienced musician. I play a bunch of instruments and taught theory for a, a good number of years at the college level. Um, but I just want to kind of show you how this is meant to work. Now, right now, I have this hooked up through USB, and it's, it's mapped to my DAW. 
uh, Reaper over here. Uh, the Teensy board is what takes in the power but also does USB control. So um, I have this already enabled in Reaper and um, as I press down a, a button I get nothing but when I combine it with the touchpad I get that that uh, that cord coming out of it and of course I can the whole design is to strum through these this is not very loud I'm not sure why yet give me a second now oh, oh I know why it's not very loud let's try this try actually plugging it in there we go all right so now we're not hearing the desktop's internal speaker we're hearing my monitors uh, I've got this of course on a, a Farfisa VST um, the Martini uh, Combo Model 5 but you could drive any VST you want with this thing um, an organ isn't a very strummy sort of sound but that's okay I just kinda wanted to show you what you might do with this now the the notes are arranged along the circle of fifths this is a little different from the Lestrum design which is in turn is based on the Suzuki Omnichord um, an instrument of, of times past that you can I don't think you can still buy those but uh, the, the basic idea is kind of the same in all these these instruments. The arrangement is, is in the software for the Teensy, so if you wanted to, you could go in and, and change it, but you have these note names, these root names, silk screened on the PCB. So right now I haven't messed with it just yet. Um, the Lestrum is arranged chromatically, so ascending from C. That has advantages and disadvantages for an instrument this small, but uh, if you're playing mostly diatonic stuff, especially in major, this is about as easy as it gets because you can just do your one, four, five all without moving your, your thumb very far. Right? And of course you can do... You can do a little more flexible stuff with the built-in touch sensor. I should add that Johan also has the ability... The, he's, he's added the ability in his code to break these touch pads out so you could actually just use the board to house the teensy but you could sort of override these these capacitive touch pads um, and use an external set of set of cap sensors that you've made yourself which is something I'm looking into for a couple of reasons um, you can also do this just hold your thumb down and trigger the cords by holding the switches um, that's the way it's set up in the stock firmware anyway. Uh, and again, where it gets kind of tricky is if you want more advanced voicing. So for instance, if I want a D flat major seven, let's see, that's actually not triggering correctly. Hold on. I gotta press the first and the third rows for that key together. Um, otherwise I don't get the major seven. So if I wanted to do that, that traditional sort of, uh, you know, do to t to te sort of thing that happens a lot uh, in D flat. I would start here. Now to get to that four chord, I gotta go all the way over here. But you can kind of get used to that. You're also noticing I'm getting some sort of weird note triggering. This is um. This is apparently a repercussion of, of the way this capacitive touch switch works. I haven't had too many issues with it, especially since Johan actually provides a little custom cut rubber pad with these, which I'm not using right now. Let me get, get that out. But you can actually just put this in the back of the board and that kind of improves your accuracy. Now, this is all the, the basic functionality you get with the, the USB MIDI, but if you wanted to uh, put the uh, 3.2 in like I've done here and spend a few more bucks in the Teensy you get some internal sounds as well. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. This may be a little bit quiet. Um, let me mute my my Reaper over here so you don't confuse that. These There's also a little set button up here which ena enables you to get some some utility functions in the Teensy. So um, I believe this is the volume up for the strum. Now right now we're in sine wave mode built-in amplifier there, there really is none that's why the signals kind of kind of weak um, but you can still plug a set of headphones into this and and hear the signal just fine um, it has just enough power to to push a little a little set of headphones as long as you're not pushing like a, a 600 ohm you know pair of buyers or something crazy like that uh, 
The sine wave uh, sound is okay. I actually prefer the second synth sound that comes in the box, which is the quote-unquote auto harp sound. This is a car plus strong string algorithm, um, and Johan actually used PJRC's DSP sort of audio kit that they have, which is kind of like a GUI, sort of like, uh, I don't know, it's not quite like pure data, but it's, it's similar to any number of modular synth design tools you've seen, except it, it only speaks in a number of things that work with the, the Teensy. And uh, so he's used those tools to build this auto harp sound as well. Which I find very charming because for some reason it's actually a little out of tune on the upper notes. I've been meaning to look into why. Depends on the chord you get. Like that third is way out. But I think it's really actually pretty charming that it's that out of tune. Um, it makes it sound kind of like a real auto harp that nobody's going to all you know, 60 strings on that. Now, in addition, you also get this fun little auto accompaniment function. Now, I'm trying to remember all the buttons. I, I need to print a cheat sheet out here. But you get a little rhythm box, which has actually multiple patterns. There's 16 different patterns in here. You can, of course, change the, the tempo of the rhythm box. And you also get auto accompaniment to go along with your strumming. All of which can actually be changed fairly flexibly. So I, I know I can turn off the, um, the gated chord in the middle. I can turn the volume up and down. Of course, this has all been programmed so it varies depending on ri what rhythm pattern you've got selected. Hold on. There we go. button press on. This arrangement has its advantages and disadvantages too, of course. If I wanted to do that chromatic pass motion, and of course I really should have used a diminished chord there, but I didn't really have the thumb coordination to jump all the way over from that E flat minor, and then press the rows one and two to get to the E dim, and then back to the F major. Um, partially because of the, the angle I'm holding this at. If you're actually using this two-handed, it's, uh, again, surprisingly playable, but you could, you could definitely improve on this by building it into a bigger box, which is something you could absolutely do since this is all in kit form. You could just build a box with all your switches and then wire the switches into the PCB. You could uh, externally kick your touch sensors out and all that stuff. Uh, so that is actually something I'm planning to do for my bandmate. I'm going to see if I can make this into a bigger, more stage-worthy box with glow-in-the-dark uh, root notes and everything on the box. And maybe even build a little speaker into it for her so she can rehearse in her spare time with the, the T-chord strum. I am really impressed with this thing, and it's really cute, uh, but it, it's also kind of surprisingly uh, utilitarian. And because of the way it's done, uh, the Teensy is basically an Arduino. So you can get into that code 
and change the way the 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 cord strum behaves. One of the things that I'm hoping to do is set up a switchable sustain mode for this. So instead of having to hold a chord button, I would actually just press that and uh, it would basically retain that until the next chord switch. Now that would be a little tricky because these switches are not the most uh, accurate in the world. They do work for the, the standard utility, but there's a little bit of switch bounce. <coughs> so one consideration would be um, how do I avoid maybe uh, you know, re-triggering that button then turning off the cord. Another thing I'd like to be able to do is switch this into a chromatic mapping uh, between the, the circle of fifths arrangement and your, your C, C sharp, D sort of arrangement. And I'd also like to be able to transpose this about C because as you can see, if I'm playing a tune in D flat and I'm trying to get to that four chord and it's all the way over here, that's a little tricky. It'd be nice to be able to sort of make C whatever the, the, the tonic of the, the, the the piece is, whatever the, the tongue of the song is, and be able to map accordingly to that. And I can also see some utility in being able to reprogram on the fly the chord types that come out of this. So for instance, if I had a special mode where I could press the set key and then instead of getting a major, you know, like an 047 sort of co uh, chord on the first row, if I wanted a Steely Dan Mu chord, I wanted an 027. Uh, sort of arrangement that I might press that and go into special chord entry mode and then I can change the mapping so this first button would trigger like oh two, whoa that sent out a note and it shouldn't have where's my rubber pad Woo! okay oh two and I believe this would be seven there you go and that would tell it okay whenever he presses this button I don't want um, a major third a minor third I want a major second and a perfect fourth that would be really handy to do that on the fly without having to go in and hack the code every time I want different chord types on the fly. So these are all some things that I'm planning to try and do and because the Teensy uh, can be developed for over the Arduino IDE, um, that sh I mean, it's going to be tricky for me because I'm not super awesome with C, but I think it's something I can do. Uh, for 40 bucks or so, this is an awesome little tool. I really have come to think of it as an instrument and again I'm not playing very well holding it at an angle like this. But I've been sitting here jamming with these things all weekend. They built super, super fast. Uh, I have to assume that this is a much faster build than Lestrum because everything is basically, again, centralized here. You can even order the Teensy with the, the pins pre-soldered, which I will admit to doing this first time around. Um, Johan does provide the header pins for the Teensy in addition to the socket. So if you're looking at ordering um, these boards from PJRC and like, oh, wait a minute, I gotta throw another 60 cents out of my order, or maybe I'll just pay him three bucks to get solder the pins on. Well, Johan includes the freaking pins. So uh, I've got an extra a couple of sets of header pins now for the Teensy that came with my two kits. And uh, those are included in the box. I mean, it's, it's just a really good deal for a really interesting instrument. And I'll also add to it that you don't, with the, with the open firmware nature of this, you could just almost look at this as a really inexpensive sort of MIDI CC controller, because once you go into the Teensy, you can make these, these switches do whatever you want them to do. You could set this on top of your MIDI controller and use this to, to trigger program changes or trigger parameter changes or whatever you needed it to, to, to do. Just wipe out the, the strumming firmware, maybe even use your cap touchpad to I don't know, send eight variable controller change messages uh, and you can use that to open your filter up or something like that. This is a really inexpensive, just for what the hardware that you get, it's very affordable, and it's a very quick build and what a nice little form factor. I mean, you can really just carry this thing around. Um, in case you're wondering, by the way, you can operate this off of batteries, uh, but the Teensy has a trace on the back side of the board that needs to be cut with an X-Acto knife if you're going to do that, um, because, well, actually that's not entirely true. Johan has some, some open pads here that you can use to solder on an external power supply like a battery. If you were to use that, then you would need to cut the power pin going from USB, and then you could still use it as a USB controller without pushing the voltage into two sources and thusly frying the microcontroller board, frying, frying the Teensy. I would really recommend getting this with the 3.2 because it does just add so much fun. Uh, these, these auto accompaniment patterns are a really good time. I love that you can go into the code and also change the patterns uh, as you like. You could even change the samples if you're so uh, inclined. You would need some, 
some special tool chains to do that, but if you look through Johan's code, all the secrets are kind of revealed right there. So uh, you could change this the, the cheesy Korg Mini Pop 7 samples to whatever else you wanted. Um, but I, I love this thing. I think this is this is one of the most fun uh, expenditures I've made of 40 bucks in, in a couple hours in a long time. I'm, I'm looking forward to hacking it a little bit. I'm looking forward to maybe putting it even in a little dock and, and building a bigger version of this um, for using on stage uh, to make real music with because I, I see this has a lot of potential.